fans, and welcome back to episode 14 of the Dyna Build series. People have been complaining I've been talking too much during the beginning of these episodes, so I'm gonna make it really quick. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a sissy bar and a curved license plate mount with integrated turn signals and brake lights. Also a quick detach mount for the sissy bar uh, with these bolts. They go on like the struts and stuff, so that way you can take the sissy bar on and off. Uh, the sponsors for this episode are gonna be uh, Biltwell. Biltwell, of course, uh, known for their high quality products. I've got their grips, uh, I've got their, their tank bag right here. I've also got some of their luggage that I haven't been able to try out yet, but uh, they were nice enough to send those stuff out. So uh, go check them out. Links as always down in the description. Today is probably gonna be one of those, let's take a lot of trips to the store days because I'm doing something that is supposed to not fit, but I'm gonna try to make it fit anyways. It's probably gonna be a shit show. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing but left but to get to work. So now that we're a little bit further into the build, I can actually tell you guys what I'm trying to do here. So I went ahead and got the turn signals and the uh, strut bolts off. Now, uh, let me try to, to explain to you what I'm trying to do in theory. So I'm adding a sissy bar, but I don't want the sissy bar to be bolted on. I want it to be quick release. So I bought this quick release kit. Uh, it's got the little Darylin plastic things that this bracket goes on like so. But the problem with that is that you have to relocate your turn signals and your brake lights, which with the curved license plate mounts, let me show you that real quick. So I got the Cycle Visions curved license plate mount. And if you look here, there are little LEDs on it. So it does actually have the the uh, stoplight and the turn signals, but one, the LEDs are not DOT compliant. That I really don't care about. I just don't trust having those little LEDs as my only lighting in the rear. So essentially what I'm going to try to do is install the quick mount onto the, uh, oops, onto the rear fender as so, and then somehow find a way to uh, keep the uh, rocket boosters on the outside of it. That way that uh, it'll pretty much be best of both worlds. The problem is, is that these don't mount up flush. They've got a little adapter on them. So I'm gonna have to either modify the adapters or um, grind something down, cut something up, do something. I'm gonna have to get creative here, but that's basically what I expected to have to do. So I'm not you know, stressed out about it or anything. I'm just gonna kind of have to go to the drawing board and uh, see what I can do. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've got a plan of attack. So let me kind of walk you through what I found out. Okay, so here's the stock bolt that we're going to have to use to uh, put these on. The reason that we have to use the stock bolt and not the bolt that it came with is, as you can see, not only are they two different sizes, but uh, they're the same length, which is of course not going to work since we're actually going into the turn signals. Also, on the bike, the, the part that it's under the fender, this part right here is not threaded on the back like it is on the front. So this kit actually is not compatible with a street bob like it said it did. I thought so when I, uh, I got the package and it says right there, FX DWD, DWG, which is a wide glide, um, which has the turn signal on the actual fender itself. So what I'm gonna do is since um, this bracket right here is about half an inch uh, bigger 
or I'm sorry, an inch bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and go get a bolt that's an inch longer than this. This is coming in at about two and a half, so I'm gonna try to find one that's three and a half. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that today. I really hope so. If not, I'm gonna have to get even more creative. And then also, I went ahead and measured this. This is the license plate bracket that we are no longer going to be using, and uh, it's coming in at around half an inch. So to keep, to keep them uh, spaced accordingly, this bracket and this bracket are not the same size. So in order to keep the uh, lights spaced out evenly in the back, I'm gonna have to add half an inch to it, which I measured the, these um, coming in at just over half an inch. These are actually uh, spacers from the uh, air ride suspension, but they're black and they're not exactly the correct size, but um, with a washer, I'll be able to uh, utilize them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to the store, and try to find this bolt in three and a half inches. So wish me luck. Okay, so we're back from the store and thankfully they had exactly what I needed. So as you can see here, this is the stock bolt and this is the bolt that we just picked up from Lowe's. So we're gonna go ahead and see if this solves our problems. the uh, two turn signals on and honestly I think I'm starting to kind of know what I'm doing here. So as you can see here they are pretty evenly spaced. I mean they're within I think 1 16th of an inch. I know this is not cleaned up and everything like that and we have wires hanging down but uh, I just wanted to get kind of an idea of uh, placement first and we have confirmed that uh, with the quick mounting bracket here that slides on there and then this little thing goes down here. It's really hard to do with one hand, but as you can see, that's basically how it'll sit. Um, that'll be placed behind the saddlebags when they are being used. Hopefully, I'll be able to use the saddlebags and this at the same time. I uh, haven't confirmed that, but uh, we're not gonna be able to see until we get everything on. Now, the reason I left the wires all dangling and loose is because this is actually gonna have to be spliced into the current tail light setup. As you can see here, it's got wires and everything like that, so. Now on top of uh, you know buying bolts and doing all that kind of crap, I get to uh, do electrical work as well. So, yay! But obviously it shouldn't be too difficult. You got ground, constant power, and then turning signals. So shouldn't be that hard. Just gotta break out the multimeter and see which wire does what, and then splice in from there, and we should be good to go. Okay, so what I did was I depinned the uh, license plate uh, wiring harness thing because first off, it's not plug and play like it says it was. Uh, maybe on some of the older bikes, but on the newer bikes, the left signal, right signal, and license plate are all broken up into different pins. This one was made for all one connector, so that wouldn't have worked even if I wanted to do it like that, but I've gone ahead and depinned that connector. So what you see here is the uh, wires coming from the license plate and I've gone ahead and plugged them into different uh, power outlets on the harness and as you can see I pretty much got everything um, hooked up the way it should be. Uh, the only thing I don't have hooked up is the blinkers but I've already marked those. Um, the blue is left and then this blue is also left. So what I'm going to do now is um, mount the plate, run the wires up to here and then I'm actually going to have to splice and uh, potentially solder some of these wires together. So definitely not my forte, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot.
So, I think I did it, guys. Uh, let me try to get you a close-up of what we uh, actually did here. So this probably looks like somewhat of a rat's nest, but uh, this was the uh, line from the uh, curved license plate mount. Basically what we just did is tied them into the, um, the three that go to the stock ones. I also wanna retract a statement I said earlier about it being plug and play. It would be plug and play. I did not see that uh, these three clips go down to a single clip down here, and that's the eight pin that it was talking about. So, like I said earlier, um, that it would not fit, I take that back, it would fit. So if you're wanting to do just the license plate mount and not keep the rocket boosters, you would be able to do that, uh, just a simple plug and play. So just in case anybody was thinking of not buying it strictly because of that reason. So I've tested it once and it worked. So let's see if it's actually gonna do it for the camera now. Yes, it works. This is the first try and it worked. Oh my God, I'm so happy. So these look orange on camera, but they're not. They're red, they're the same color red as these, but they just look oranger on camera. As you can see, it adds quite a bit of light to uh, the rear of the bike. Let me go ahead and put the uh, hazards on. So you can see that they they flash, and then this also operates as a, uh, a brake light when you press on the brakes. Ah, looks so good, I'm so happy. It's always nice when you have a plan and it works the very first time and you don't have to, to make a bunch of changes. So anyways, the two things that we have left to do is to actually put the license plate on. You do have to cut your license plate, which I'm not sure is 100% legal, but you won't be able to see where we cut it because you're just making a little notch on it to fit uh, the wiring harness from the plate mount. And after that, we actually get to assemble the sissy bar and put it on the back of the bike. After that, I'm probably gonna go grab uh, the built well luggage and put it on the sissy bars to see everything uh, all together. So let's get to work. So the license plate is on and goddamn is look good. Look at that, so clean. Very sturdy, very uh, very high quality construction on this. I was actually very impressed. Uh, the plastic piece that actually holds the light feels kind of cheap, but I mean, it's plastic, so of course it's gonna feel cheap. But LEDs are bright. Wiring would have been really simple if I was just replacing that. It also does come with um, block off plates as well. So if I was not to run the rocket boosters, um, I could have just put those in there and it keeps a nice flush look across the struts. Uh, the only other thing that I'll need to do to finish up this part is I'm gonna get some silicone sealant to seal the back end of the uh, the wires coming out of the uh, rocket booster taillights because I'll try to get you a close up here. Now that the, uh, the hole where the wires would go in is held in by this, plus with the gap caused by the uh, quick mount, the wires actually run right underneath it. it looks, actually it doesn't look half bad, unless you get, I mean, right up on it, but they run right into the, uh, under the rear fender, and then everything is cleaned up under there. But that leaves the hole on the back of this exposed to water and stuff like that, so I'm gonna get some silicone to, uh, to seal that up, that way no water gets in and corrodes those connectors. Other than that though, I'm extremely pleased with how uh, this has turned out. And there's only one thing left to do, uh, and that's to assemble the actual sissy bar itself. It should be fairly simple, it's only like four bolts, five bolts, and then uh, we'll be done for the day. So let's get to work.
we went ahead and got the uh, sissy bar on. We got the uh, saddlebags back on. They fit with the sissy bar, which is awesome. And then we got the luggage put on as well. So right now I have the luggage on the actual luggage rack that is detachable. So if I want to use a sissy bar without that luggage rack, I can, but uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass, so I don't really see a reason to take it off aside from just looks. But uh, this Exfil 80 bag is awesome. I just kind of sat here and played around with it, taking it on and off the, the, the bag. Uh, I put it the, on the, this side as well, and the, the backrest, the padded portion, lines up right right here. So that's going to be really cool, uh, especially on those longer overnight trips to have that little extra back support to be able to, to lean back on that. And then of course my favorite feature in case you didn't see the, uh, the video where I unbox these, that folds out and you've got spots for all of your tools and everything else. What I'm going to do, what my plans are for this is to kind of go over all of my critical fasteners and see what size they are and then go and actually buy all new uh, wrenches and sockets and everything. That way I'm not having to take everything out of my toolbox, put it in here every single time I use this. Uh, and then what I'm actually gonna do for this bag, I know a lot of people are putting wrenches and stuff in here. I'm actually gonna buy a um, first aid kit, uh, motorcycle specific, so not like band-aids and stuff, but actual like tourniquet stuff that would actually make a difference uh, because you can pull that off and take it with you. So that's my plans for this. So if you have any recommendations on good, real first aid kits, uh, please reach out to me and uh, let me know because I'm completely ignorant on those type of things. So a trip to the hardware store is in order to get some more tools. Let's not try to kid, I'm gonna go to Harbor Freight. And then I actually got to use the Xfil 11 bag this weekend on our ride and I absolutely I absolutely loved it. It's a good size, it fit my DSLR and my, uh, my Joby pod. That way when I get off, I can just unzip it and grab it and we're good to go. And also one thing I don't even think I mentioned on the video where I unbox these, I'm really excited for this pocket because I'm a huge douche, but this pocket right here, unzips and it's, that's it. That's just that little bitty pocket right there. And it's a perfect spot to just put your vape there. So, I mean, if you're a douche like me and, and vape and you know, also like to blow dudes and drive Subarus, that's a, that's a huge benefit. So, I mean, other than that, I mean, you could put your cell phone there or I don't know, something else that you pull out often. No, not your penis, don't put your penis in there. But uh, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. It definitely does change up the look of the bike. Uh, it definitely puts it into like a more touring mode, which I mean, if we're gonna be doing those longer trips, I'm gonna need the touring mode bike. I'm blown away because we had a build series where nothing went wrong, everything went to plan, and I only had to make one trip to the store, but I knew I was going to. I knew I was going to, but I wanted to see how long of a bolt I needed before I went and got that bolt. So, man, that is, uh, that's two in a row now, actually. The air cleaner, actually, three in a row. Yeah, three in a row, because we did the, the derby cover and the point cover, and there was no issue on that one. And then we did the air cleaner. There's no issue on that one. And now this one, that's three in a row with no issue. What the hell is going on? But I want to give another shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Billwell. They make awesome products. I cannot wait to put this Exfil 80 bag to the test, see exactly what I can fit in it and uh, where it will take us. But uh, once again, thank you to them. Uh, of course, links to all the products, the Billwell bags, the Sissy Bar, the uh, Cycle Visions curved license plate mount and the actual docking kit are all gonna be in the description. Some of them are gonna be eBay links, so I'm gonna put the full title in there because those links change, but if usually if you just copy and paste that title into there, it'll bring up their most recent posting. Other than that, guys, I just wanna thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.